Income tax 2023-2024, maker's depreciation. What is the basis for depreciation? Get ready and some coffee, because contrary to popular belief, you need a strong imagination for income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information comes from Publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers, Listed Property, and more, Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Sole proprietorship schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula. Noting the schedule C itself, basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses, which you could call business deductions, result in net business income. The net business income rolling from the schedule C into line one income of the formula. The formula outlining the calculation for the form 1040, the first page of which we see here, the schedule C ultimately rolling into line number eight, additional income from schedule one. This is a schedule one, additional income and adjustments to income, part one, additional income, schedule C rolling into line three, business income or loss. This is the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, having an income statement format, income minus expenses. We're down here on the expenses side of things. Noting the expenses is usually the largest category of different items, and some expenses are going to be more difficult than others, such as depreciation, given the fact, as we've seen in prior presentations, that even if we're in a cash-based system, the code, the IRS, forces us to do an accrual thing sometimes, such as when we buy property, depreciable property, property, plant, and equipment, instead of just expensing it, we have to put it on the books as an asset. We have no balance sheet on our tax return, therefore we're going to have separate depreciation schedules tracking the balance sheet account, the asset account of the equipment, the accumulated depreciation, which is a contra asset account, and giving us the book value as well as the expenses that we can write off in the current year. Remembering there's multiple kinds of depreciation, so we can think of different categories in terms of how we're going to apply the depreciation. We first have the layer that makes sense from an accounting standpoint, the tax code often borrowing from generally accepted accounting principles, the accrual accounting principle, for example, and the maker's depreciation generally does that, meaning it uses a double declining balance, which is similar to what you would expect given just normal depreciation rules. Then on top of that, it often has these lobbying rules and the politicians trying to, try to get elected and whatnot make these different rules that deviate from normal accounting concepts. And that is the 179 deduction, for example, and special depreciation, which we talked about in prior presentations, making more allowance for depreciation upfront, which is basically similar to a cash-based system in that we're kind of expensing it more like when we buy it oftentimes in those cases, although it's a much more complex way to expense it. 
Now we're looking at the maker's depreciation though, and that's the one that should be more stable over the years because uh, the law, the law uh, isn't going to wipe out the foundational concept that's based on accounting principles. It will fluctuate, you would think, with the upfront deductions like the 179 deduction. All right, so what is the basis for depreciation? The basis for depreciation of maker's property is the property's cost or other basis multiplied by the percentage of business investment use. So we see this concept before with the 179, noting that the basis can kind of be thought of as the cost, right? It's basically the cost, although it could include other things that we needed to do in order to get whatever the thing that we're getting installed ready for use. For example, a freezer for an ice cream store. You're gonna buy the freezer, but you also have to install the freezer. So the installation might be part of the cost of the freezer that you wouldn't expense, but rather put on the books as an asset because you needed to do it in order to get the thing ready for operation. Instead of expensing it up front, you got to put it on the books as an asset and then expense it over the useful life. Noting you might still get this big upfront depreciation with the 179 or the special, but let's put those aside right now, or even if we took those, the remaining cost or basis after taking those is what then we would basically allocate in accordance with makers, which is usually like a double declining balance accounting method, half year uh, convention, uh, assuming we bought it like in the middle of the year is what the half year convention means, which is what we'll talk about. Now, if you bought the freezer partially for business and partially for personal, which is most commonly seen for small businesses with an automobile, for example, then you, you, your depreciable basis is only the part that we're allocating towards the business because the personal stuff, we don't get to depreciate. It's not a, a depreciable item. Now, note also that the basis, you can think of the basis as different than the adjusted basis if you would like to, but oftentimes people use them in practice interchangeably, meaning that the basis is the cost and it's gonna go down over time as you allocate the depreciation. So the basis you can think of, if you wanna put it, I've been watching these lectures on energy, like so you, basis is like the potential energy, right? It's like the rock that's that you're holding up that has the potential to get you that deduction. It's just a matter of when you're gonna get the deduction, right? When are you gonna consume that uh, deduction and get the benefit from it? You'd like to do it up front because that's when you get the biggest benefit because of the time value of money. But if you don't get to consume the basis up front, you're storing that kind of energy, that basis until later, and you're gonna get it in the form of depreciation later. Or if you don't depreciate it and you sell or dispose of the property, the higher the basis, the more likely it is that you're gonna have a lower uh, gain or you're gonna have a loss. And so that's gonna, that's the general idea. Okay. So for a, now also just realize that basis can also be a little bit more complex if you transfer the property instead of purchasing the property from business to, from personal to business. And if you inherit the property or something like that, or you get the property from a related party, because those all result in questions about what is the basis, because the basis is based on usually the fair market value, which is determined by purchasing the property in a fair market type of transaction where both sides are, are trying to benefit from it. Okay, for discussion or uh, business investment use, see partial business or investments use under property used in your business or income producing income in chapter one. So reduce that amount by any credits and deductions allowable to the property. So if you get other credits, so we talked a little bit about if you put it in upfront, you might get the 179 deduction or special depreciations. So if you put the property on the books for $100,000 and you got a an upfront depreciation of 179 for $80,000 for whatever reason, right? We're just going to say 80,000 is what we could consume for that piece of equipment. Then obviously you would subtract that and your adjusted basis has now been reduced to 20,000. That's the amount of like energy you have left for deductibility after taking that 179 deduction. So the following are examples of some credits and deduction, deductions that reduce basis. So any deduction for section 179 property. 
So we just talked about that. So the idea would be you got the 100,000 piece of equipment. If I could take the whole thing in 179 deduction, then I would basically have consumed all of the energy, all of the benefit from that potential energy right there. But if I only deducted part of it, then the remainder that I didn't get for 179 deduction is what I can still consume with normal depreciation, which would have to be depreciated over multiple years into the future, because that's what normal depreciation does, which we'll talk more about the calculation later. So any deduction under section 179B of the Internal Revenue Code for capital costs to comply with Environmental Protection Agency sulfur regulations, any uh, reduction under section 179D of the Internal Revenue Code for certain energy efficient commercial building property. So similar concepts here. It's just that now we have these special rules for these special cutouts that the government pretends that they're doing on our behalf to save the world. But I kind of feel like there's some kickbacks happening or something. I don't know. That. I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. I, f I think, you know, innovation does more than, s than the subsidies here from you know, like crooked politicians. But in any case, any deduction for removal of barriers to the uh, disabled and the elderly? Any uh, disabled access credit, enhanced oil recovery credit, and credit for employer provided child care facilities and services. So, again, these are kind of special type of situations, special credits where you're getting a benefit from it. So, you're already kind of consuming some of that basis uh, when you put it on the book. So, any special depreciation allowance, which is similar to 179 deduction, you're getting that benefit up front, and therefore the basis goes down. So basis adjustment for investment credit property under Section 50C of the Internal Revenue Code and basis adjustments for advanced manufacturing investment credit property. You could see Section 48D, D5 of the Internal Revenue Code. So for additional credits and deductions that affect uh, deductions uh, basis, see Section 1016 of the Internal Revenue Code. So for most people, most small businesses, it's going to be that 179 and special depreciations that are the default things that we think about. But obviously, if you're in one of those specialty areas where you think some other credit might apply, then you can do some more research uh, at the Internal Revenue Service IRS and uh, dig into that, keeping in mind that if you get a benefit based on something that was purchased, which would be depreciated under normal depreciation concepts for an accounting concept, then you're always going to have this interplay you got to keep in the back of your mind between when I get the benefit, what is the impact on the basis? Because the basis is the potential energy. And if you're giving me a benefit up front, you would think I've consumed some of that potential energy, those potential deductions already. So there's usually going to be a relationship we have to keep in mind. Software, of course, helps with those calculations so you can kind of work them out and deconstruct them. All right, so enter the basis for depreciation under column C in part three of form 4562. For information about how to determine the cost or other basis of property, see what is the basis of your depreciable property in chapter one. So we'll dive more into makers calculations in future presentations.